Well, maybe the first thing uh, I, I would like to speak about is, is my approach to the balancement of, of such a big instrument. I think balancing the bass is one of the problems that we got more, uh, more evident on the double bass than on other strings, string instruments. My approach is that I play standing up usually as a solo player. <clears throat> In orchestra, of course, I, I sit down because uh, playing several hours in an orchestra can eventually make yourself tired, so we need actually to have a position. But when I play sitting down, I've got, I, I actually sit down, I don't put any, 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 as I can say, tension on my back. So if I, if I had a stool, I would sit down like that, quite lower down, with a low instrument. But I find that Paradoxically, um, sitting down in some way blocks more the bass than the freedom that I got when I stand up. <laughs> the problem, because yeah, you, you have got advantages in the sense that if it's, if you sit down, it's much more intuitive. The opening, one of our problems is how to go high up on the. <laughs> <laughs> like that. Uh, one of the problems to get really on high note and. When we are there, we might have to play a, ba a bass. Right? So if I sit down, sometimes this is a little sacrificed. Maybe this is... <laughs> but when I stand up, I can actually move the bass. And that's what I like to do. Apart from the fact that, I mean, you can avoid the problem of stopping the back of the, the, the bass from vibrating. But most of the times that happens. So already the fact that the leg is touching in some way the bottom of the base may cause a, a sort of a lower efficiency on the low, but on the low strings. But most of all is that I like to sort of feel that the base is free to move with me. And in my in my years of playing, I also had an intuition, of course, very personal very personal, that the instrument is too long and too big to think to one only setup of balance. So the bass, basically, the more is balanced, you see, without touching anything, the, the easier will be to play it. Because if I have to hold it while I'm playing, of course, the hands are busy holding the bass and they can't think to move. But now, if the bass is comfortable, you see, to play, the concepts to make a string play, they are very essential. I mean, basically, the bow should go 90 degrees with the string. It's like something gripping. Sometimes people think it's really something really complex or some sort of magic. But basically, I mean, that's all we should be making. And since there are many hairs on a, on, on a, on a bow, we should try and use them, you know what I mean? So avoiding doing like that, that sometimes makes a scratchy sound with the bow. So all hair and 90 degrees on the strings, not very difficult to understand. Now, the, the last thing about the bow is also very simple. I mean, we've got, if, there, if we don't make any correction, the bow designs a circle. So, if I don't do anything about it, I play like that. That, unfortunately, will go against what I said before, because unfortunately, it will be not 90 degrees uh, orthogonal to the, to the string. So, the movement that I make here is just a compensation to make a circular line to become straight. But it's nothing sort of really magic of its own. So it's just a compensation to let the bow go straight on the string. That's how basically you pull up the sound and the weight of the arm should stay in the instrument. Sometimes I think wrongly, they think that in this way you get more sound in orchestra, but because sometimes when you reverse the bow, sometimes wrongly they do this so the arm goes the weight of the arm goes out of the, of the string and you lose sound but if the arm is in the same position the sound doesn't really change very much even you know you can feel it's sort of the same so you see i just turn the hand there and i can switch from one position to the other 
Now, to, to obtain the time in this position when I'm on the low string would make something terribly uncomfortable. And actually, if you see pictures of all bass players in the past, they, they kept it quite straight. Okay, so, and th that's the reason why. It would make it really uncomfortable, unfortunately, to go to go on high pitch because I've got, as you see, the instrument is very big. So here I've got an obstacle in my playing. And uh, here the instinct would push you to sort of, I mean, instinctively, I can see some students, they, they do this. Because you feel, you, I, I have to get there, so I feel in some way, uh, the more I do this, the more, as you can see, I have complicate. Things. So I thought that at some point I changed the balance so from the thumb position on. Practically, the balance is on two points: is on the tail pin and is leaning on, on my shoulder. So here I got the same comfort as I, as if I was sitting down. So that you see, I can nearly reach the bridge that is the. This is quite a big bass. But talking also with my friends is, is true. Sometimes if you feel you could even touch the bridge, it means that when you play in a, in a high pitch, it becomes absolutely normal. No effort. But when I will go up, I'll do this. Obviously, if I just to change one note, I'll not make up and down all the time. So. That's for a time, but if I play a lot on low register, so standing up lets me to have two, two sort of balancements of the bass, one optimized for the high pitch and one perfect for the lows. And the result in the deepness, especially of the lows, I think is, is quite, you can and, uh, sort of feel it uh, with your ears. It's not something little, it's quite a big difference. Plus, sometimes in extreme cases, I can also do this and push the, the bass when I need to hold a real low, low. I'm using all the passive weight of the bass, you see. And that makes it completely different from the sound of a tension. The tension sounds slightly nosy. When you put passive weight, you get that. you see. It's quite. I mean, it's quite evident to hear. So that's one thing. One 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 important thing that uh, you know. I wanted to explain how I and why I, I stand up. Talking about technique, um, how I hold the bow. Also, there are. I mean, in, in the years, in the years of playing and you know, teaching. I discovered that I had to reduce the number of things I, I, I was thinking about. I mean, I found that uh, to play um, a, an instrument, you know, a string instrument, uh, 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 the best way you can do, sometimes you have to do very, very well, very precisely, but very few things. I mean, the concept, the, the fundamental concepts are not uh, uh, hundreds, they are five, six, you know what I mean? So the bow is to go straight to the string. You have to use all the hair. You, of course, you don't need to, to always use all the bow. If I must make a short note, I don't need to make it like, like that, you know what I mean? So if I need a, a one quarter note, I do. If I need two quarter note, I'll do it like that. So you see, eventually we can arrive at 10, but not many. About the left hand, I always try and have it as similar, or even there, to reduce the the position. So if I play, I tend to, to think it more like a, like a position I would hold it on a keyboard. That's my approach. Maybe going up, I I have to reduce a bit the distance of the, of the finger, so I might sort of slide a little bit. But basically, if I play like that here, I try and keep the same articulation, the same po relative position of, of the hand. Recently, I rediscovered a bit that in some cases, you know, our technique at the thumb position mainly use, uh, use, uh, use uh, thumb and three fingers. 
I, I thought, well, since I've still got the fourth one, sometimes... <laughs> And I discovered that sometimes making octave is much less stressful, stressful than... Of course I can do it, maybe now I feel them also, it's not long that I try to to add also the fourth. But I think this position I found also in transcriptions. For instance, uh, um, remembering a chord, uh, uh, spet, uh, if I have to make a chord like in an end of uh, this chord, is so much less, more, more natural as a position than, than this one. So eventually, I'm, I'm enjoying. There is a, in arpeggione, I think I did something. No, it's not the. Eccolo. It's so close that I mean no stretch at all. I... In some way the hand will tire less so i'm i'm sort of researching in that in that field as well about i you know i never stop sort of looking for new ideas and and uh, and trying and trying and improve myself in in the technical research <laughs>